Cool. So assignment three is asking you to use the starter code from GitHub for Git. You have done that. You have uh, gone through the readme file and marks a few things as checked. The final task was to move that readme file to the notes.md file and then use the assignment readme file for our grading tool. Okay, so anyone has question on that one? Let me here go to this uh, previous one. Here to get to this stage where uh, mark the readme item <coughs> object, right? And then create a new readme file, move things to notes, and commit. It's quite cool. Let me show you guys what it means by forking. Uh, let's just start the code. GitHub. Uh. So here, here are your forks, and I can see that I can help uh, seeing people submitting uh, stuff, and I can follow. So it'd be nice to see, like you know, it's good to see more commits and things that I I can look into it. Of course, when you submit the assignment, then we can see the, the, the commits and the review, reviewer tool. Cool. Okay, what are we supposed to do? You start out with, uh, this is the final product, and the final product has all the features, how to edit a list, how to add an item, how to delete an item, how to move between one list, how to move between, from one list to another, and uh oh, did I break it? Sometimes it's uh huh, and it saves automatically. Save how to move one list to another location, right? And how to add a new list. There's some extra for people to do. Does it save when you move lists around? Yeah, it saves automatically. Okay. Uh, there are a few things you can do, like how to delete the list, you know, uh, or AJAX. If you use Ajax but with optimistic updates, it means you add the word OK here. In this final product, I don't have it, but you can do it, is that if you press enter, it doesn't reload the page, but it just adds to the list using JavaScript, and it uses Ajax to tell the server to update the data. But in this case, I don't, uh, you know, I just reload the page, that's just, we can make it better, really. So, and it just, Code base. I deleted this by deleting all the items and all the um, the list name itself. Then it's gone. So that's the final product. What's the earlier? Uh, what's the what do you have? Getting starting out. <coughs> starting out, you only have one list. But we decided a convention that we will use 0.md. Uh, and as you work on more lists, you can create 1.md, 2.md, etc. Right? So that is the feature that you know when you implement the add the add new list here, you get that done. Now we have dragging between one list. But when you have more than one list, then you have to support uh, dragging from one list to another. And this is something that uh, it's going to help you. It's a lot easier than you think. Is that we worked on a save all feature, uh, submit all. So imagine you have this, this whole big thing. How many forms do you see on the screen? Six, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that right? Oh, yeah, oh, no, you Right. So let's say form, okay, dot length. There's seven forms, okay? How many types of form are there? Three. Three, right? Okay. In the starter code, I only have two posts. 
here. Um, one is uh, here is app.rb. The starter code we have only two posts. A get to get the list, and then two posts here. This post is to update a list itself. One more time, list update form. Update one list. That's the starter code, right? And then add item to a list. Add item to a list. When you add a new list, you can reuse that form. When you add a new list, you reuse that form. When you add, I'm sorry, when you already have a new list, then you reuse that form. But when you do add a list like this, you have to create another one called, up to you, but you have to create a new list, really. So, create a new list, right? And what this will be, list, you know, maybe you can call it create, sometimes I just call this. That's the Rails way. Just post to the resource with a then they will be create. So that's something you have to implement. But it won't be hard, right? Will be parents, uh, list name, right? So something like list.new, but there's no ID, but you have to decide the ID to save up here. Dot save takes care of it for you. So just work with the ID thing. And don't worry, you can ask questions. I want to highlight this. The Ajax stuff seems scary uh, to JavaScript stuff when it comes to dragging, but we will I'll explain right now. Now, when you drag from A to B, what's happening now is that I submit two posts. I save the form in the first list, and I save the form in the second list, right? So. If your code is smart enough to only save two forms, that's okay. But start out, you could just say, hey, all the list form, you guys just all should save. So out of seven form, there are these forms. The three forms you can call save. How do you call submit all of them? Do you remember this tab right here? Uh, uh -oh. form update list right so let's say form update list is it update all of this list okay three of them okay I'm gonna make it even easier for you to see background I don't know uh, border one pixel solid red yeah you see those three forms so when you drag and drop, you just need to say to, to go into the JavaScript file, it's right here, and when you drop, you see right now there's automating, uh, auto submitting, you could just submit all the forms, okay? Now you could do that, you can say submit all. Now then you will have the problem that Ian had, which is if you have three forms, when you submit all, you will submit nine times. Why? I'm going to remove, uh, unfortunately I only have one list in the, there's this sort update event. Okay, this one, please stop me if you, if you, uh, if you're not, not sure on this because I need to make sure everyone understands this one. HTML sortable library. Make sure you read the, you know, don't read me. It's not too bad. The only event you should care about. This is how you normally declare your list, right? But I name it differently. I call it like JS sortable items. Later on, I may have list sortable items, so I can move the list as well. There is one event thing. <coughs> All right, these are the events that get triggered. So we know a little bit about JavaScript event. When you pass in a function, this function runs when the event triggers. We only care about the sort update. When the order of a list change, then it triggers an event. Okay? If you drag an item out and you release it, nothing changes. It doesn't run that event. It runs the sort start event though. Right? If you move and then you return it to the same thing, no need to, to do anything. But if you move and release within the, you see this? It will call sort update. 
okay so with one list sort update is run once when you drag from A to B within one list you start stop it sort update will run once do you have any question about that one if you want to do something with the list so let's take this one as an example here all right release sort update is run once are we good and then it just submit so that's in my code if you have two lists how do you uh, has, raise your hand if you have tried more than one list have you ever used sortable with more than one list all right so a few of you have done that and you have to use connected with so learn how to do this so you can add connected with and then you can drag from one list to another yes ask me that question again because uh, it just if you create the container then you'll be fine your container is right now zero and you don't have the class name but if you give the container enough space then it will work yeah okay so let's look into this sort update I'm not gonna do anything in here okay what I did was that I copy make sure you understand this okay so I can explain to everyone sort update is the event that we care about it tells you what element and what you can get out of this event this event dot detail dot item contain the current drag element it means inside this sort update when you drag it it will know what are you what you are dragging so if I drag this guy all right it's it know this is the Sinatra diff that's it e dot detail dot item yeah so for example here I can just say console dot log moved item e dot detail dot item and then you can troubleshoot this all right so clear this I drag it's a move item here are we good so far yeah now sometimes you want to check things yourself you can just check move you know and then here you say e dot detail in this case it's a much bigger object <coughs> I want to move again move and then you have a much bigger object and this object has the element that that is promised here so far so good so you can click on the each one of them for example what is n parent is that is the list that you move to so if you move in once inside one list n parent is the same list that is the n parent what is the start parent it's the list you move from and then you mouse over it's the same list but in this guys the start parents here the and parents there so only three things you need to care about I can help those who feel like this is you know a bit scary the only two guys you need to care about is start parent and end parent does that make sense you drag from this to this okay so what is that parent that parent is the list and the, the diff or the URL in this case the container of your list and it has to have the class that you call sortable on I named this JS sortable items the readme file they name it just sortable okay so that's that's up to you so I name it JS sortable items and inside that then you have each item <coughs> so here's each item js sortable item so what do we notice guys 
Where is the form? Where's the form? Is it inside? Inside these items? No, outside. So in this case, it's the parent. Why? Why is my form my parent? Ah, oh, cool. So look at these sortable items, and inside this, uh, an item. Inside item, you have the inputs. These input files are in the ERB. Uh, the item ERB here. All right here's the code version. JS sortable items, and inside that, this is where you call the sortable library on and then inside this shared item you do have a few input elements and we all learn how to use this params right input name and then you have params items and it's a, a list of objects a list of hashes and inside the hash you have name and status any question there Ajax is separate, but yesterday I showed that you use the method data.serializedArray. Did you do that? Then it's the same. If you submit by Ajax or you submit by the form, the server receives the same information. The server doesn't need to know. Yeah? It's just a serialized. Yeah. It's serialized into an array for you from an array of, of objects on the JavaScript. Remind me again when we, we get there if it's not clear there. But I want to make sure we all understand where the forms are. Do we understand the, the form in each list? This is a list form. This is a list update form. This is a item create form. And on the right hand side, you will add a list create form. Only three forms. Three types of forms. But in the final product, some forms get used a few times. Okay, still good. Now, if I use this, I have three of these forms. Every time you finish dragging, you can just say submit and all of them will get submitted. And it's good. Is, would that work? We oui, would it work? If I move anything, I just call, hey, all, all forms, just submit. Why not? Yeah, so for I will go back to this start and end. Okay. I need to let's let's just talk about updating one list. So if you look into this code right now, the starter code, you can let's visit how this gets submitted and how the order works. Okay? The starter code Right now, if you drag and drop, it's not submitting right now because I turn off submitting. You drag and drop, okay? There's nothing in, in submit right now. I just remove details. What I did in your, our starter code is that I say the button, uh, I will display the, uh, the save button. After I move, so check this out. I display it. Now, if you feel this is a bit, you know, a bit magic, you can always turn it on all the time. This save button, the job is to submit the form. 
okay so if I click save now we will the order be saved what do you think will the order be saved uh -huh. it's much harder to not save the order okay so here's the code if you're doing something and it's too hard you're probably doing something wrong so in my code is looking at the params I create the items and I save it but because when I look at the params I read this one and read this one read this one and they all become items and I save them so these guys must go into the same order as the file in here let's take a look right now it's not the same order right if I hit save I'm gonna show you the terminal as well here's the terminal and I hit save Oops. save what happens when I hit save? This screen will reload, but it's the same. This guy got moved, right? Because they just save one item at a time. Save this item to the right, save this item, save this item. How does it work? How does it work? It posts to this list. I debug params so I print it out here. The param looks like a lot of things. But basically, all the items are in params items. So you see this created item from hash one at a time. So I have the items. And I already wrote the save function. So it just worked. And you understand this? You can keep this method this way. You don't have to change anything. It will work for saving, OK? It will work for mark, marking something as done or not. It's almost the same. Send everything, it's the same, except there's an extra toggle parameter which carry the name of the item I want to toggle so I can find it and I change it to, to done or not done and I also save it. Great. Is it clearer? Yeah? Yeah? Now imagine if I drag this to another list and I call save on the first list. Right? Learn methods. Will learn methods still be saved in the first list? Are you sure? <laughs> If you move it out, then the form doesn't have that element anymore. Yeah? So then it's gone. So you call save and this item is just gone. And then you drop it into another list and you call save on that list. It's just HTML. So the other form will just call save and it, that, that's how it works. Right? Yeah. Are we good so far? Because understanding this is important to get your assignment done. But and then if and then if you understand it right, each of the tasks should not right require you to to know how to write like how to handle like you know all this crazy JavaScript stuff. There's not much in here because the starter code really is working together with your code. So I don't have the code to create a list yet. That's something you have to write. That's kind of nice exercise. I don't, you know, have the code for you to load all the lists yet. But that's also something that yesterday I talked about. And you guys can also go to my hint 
document. I will create more, happy to create more. But the most, you know, difficult things I put in here and then you can click on it and, 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 and read the instruction. Ah, oh, it's so stupid. I thought clicking it will just go down here. <laughs> Too bad. But uh, then, you know, uh, I just explained these two things as well. How does save work and how does toggling done work? So you can go and read this. Remember, the focus is your assignment. So every, between now and Sunday, every day, it should be like, how can I get ahead on my assignment, right? Just break down the simple steps. Yeah, so I, I believe click here. Oh, click, you're so stupid. Like I was hoping it will get there for me. But yeah, it does, but it opens, to, you know, opens a new uh, anchor. Okay, it's quite fascinating if you think about it. I have many forms. These two forms, I can just submit together. So don't call this, yeah? You never call this. The seven forms, why would you submit all the seven forms, right? But the, out of the seven of them, three of them, I can always submit together. This one, right? These three, I can submit together because I may drag from one to another. This form, when you submit, it only submit itself. You don't need to touch anyone else. Okay? So I'm gonna, for any of this form, I'm gonna highlight the border thing again. Border, one pixel solid red. So you now you can see all your forms. One form, two form, two, three form. And there are three, two, three types, one more time. One, two, three, it's the list update. One, two, three down here is the item create. And this is list create. Any questions about the forms? Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to the short. Here is the function when we move something. Uh, and the sort update. If you want the item to be connected, right, we need to do this. Uh, up here, if I create another list here, okay, then I have to define it to be connected with, so I say JS connected. So you can use a unique string, which is not used for other connected with sortable. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And oh, I see. So we can just or tell it to be connected like this, right? Connected. So you can give it a string, any string. So you can call it like connected items. The other one will be connected list, right? Is that okay? So all the all the guys with this class will be connected to with another one, one another. All right. And I'm going to update the index page for us to see this example. One way is for me to just copy this paste, uh, copy this code and paste it. Now I have two lists. Are we good there? Let's try. And you could create a partial called list.html. This is a partial and then call ERB on that. Yeah. And I mentioned that yesterday as well. Okay, so I have two lists. And if connected work, I should be able to drag from one to another, right? I think you need to change the name of the URL class. So yeah. They can't have the same name, the JS sortable items. Like in their example, they use JS sortable, and then your second one, you need to rename it to... Second sortable? Yeah. At least that way it worked for me when I had the same right, name. Right, right. Let's uh exactly let's let's check. First I'm gonna update the CSS to make sure that this is your list, right? Your list is width 250, so this is will be float left, margin right, temperature. Alright. Alright, so now let's see if I can move from here to here. And Oscar is saying that's not enough that you say this one one main. 
So do you have to create a new class name for each item? Hmm. I don't think so, but okay. So what I can do is, where is your sortable thing? Here, I can just say JS um, connected items. Okay, so I'm, I just assigned sortable items as, as a second class. So I could trick it so that I will connect. Actually, I could just connect to itself, no? Connect the first one to the second one. But yeah, JS connected items. So list with this class and list with this class should have the same, uh, should connect to one another. Let's see. Uh, now you might run into this problem and you're like, why is it floating and it's not giving me a good time? Well, you can set the body width to be really high. Who cares, right? In this case, then I'm going to see if I can try. Uh oh, let's try one more time. Not working. Let's check again. Sortable JS connected item JS. I feel like. Hmm. What did I do in this case? Though? Only when it's specific like this, we can cheat. Uh, so yeah. Oh, it's connect with, connect with. I probably that that way. I did not do it right. Okay, so it's connect with, right? Ah, okay. Move. Oh, it works. Now, then I'm gonna try if I only need to do one class. Let's see. Yeah. Works as well because all of these items have the same class. So in my, in my final demo product, uh, I also have two classes, really. You can just use one class, you have this connected with, okay? Now the first placeholder size is, is useful because when you move it, it kind of remember the size that you have. So remember, this list is, is big. When I move it, you see the size behind me is small. When I move this guy, the size behind me is bigger. So it's, it's nice that it matches the size, okay? You, you can set your own size, but when you, when you move a list, you may want to use that. Uh, for the items, all of them have the same size. So far, so good. Now, let's look at this sorted items here. And I want to explain because what they are doing with sort update here is different. Sort update. All right. They only add event listener to the first list and this may be enough this may be enough for most of you when you call sortable okay it actually uh, return a value and that value is like an array of those lists that you can use okay just like calling jQuery on this one dollar sign this one remember but it's so you can use. So I, I assign that to a value. You have seen var, const just means that I'm not gonna change this guy, right? So as you write your more, more code, the word const just means, you know, you, it protects you from making changes to this variable. You can change to the inside of the container, but you cannot change it to be something else, like, you know, sortable of something else. So what I do here is that I go into each of the container now container are the sortable ones, okay? Not this red color, but the container are the, the ones that I call UL here, these JS sortable items. That these are the containers. We're clear, right? Container means these guys. How many containers do I have on this page? Two. So in each container, Huh? Oh, sorry. Right? In this each container, the code here is I go into each container and 
observe, right? Just so that date event, just like on submit on something. This is if you use jQuery, it's on. But if you don't use jQuery, then it's at at uh, that's that's the jQuery version. This is the JavaScript version. You're just listening to an event. When you uh, stop dragging, it goes to a new position. Then sort of they get run. You still good there? Now this guy say I you only need to do it with one, and that may be enough for your purpose. I'm gonna show you that first. Sort container, let's say at the first one, and add event listener. All right, so that's very similar to their code. Are we good there? And I save. Okay. Now when I go to this and I drag, uh oh, where's the invalid code? Let's see where our this one. Okay. Oh, it's closing. Ah, because I did not use for each anymore. Remember? No need for each. I use for each because it's of the advanced feature that I just talked about, which is if you have 10 lists, you move from list 1 to list 2, you can only you can choose to only save list 1 and 2. But for now, let's only observe this sort container 1. Okay. This may be the right way to do it, to, to, to prevent too many events. So if I drag here, this, this get. If I drag here, what do you think? Does it trigger the event? Funnily, it does because they are connected. So it's enough. So for a connected list, you can change this code to this one. Okay? You can, I'm not saying you must, so for you can and probably it's easier for you. It's more complicated to use the other ones. However, let's start looking. It's still, it's a so let's, let's, let's troubleshoot, right? Go in here, this is e.detail. So what you want to look at is e.startParent and E dot uh, here. Okay. E dot uh, stop parent. I don't care about the item I move, right? It just get put to the to the right place. Okay. As I said, I move within myself. Start parent is here. Stop parent is undefined. Oh, interesting. If I move this from here uh, inside the other one, let's look at this one there. Start parent is itself. Second is undefined. If I move from A to B, start parent is that, and then the thing is undefined. So if you only observe one guy. Huh? I think this may be the wrong typo, is it? End parent. Okay. Whew. So we were wrong the whole time. Let's try again. It, so it should work normally. Start parent and end parent. Start parent and end parent. Drag from here to here. Start parent and end parent. No, connect just means all these events are connected. So if you drag over here, that's this this is fine. This depends on the library. Now based on what we just discussed, uh, I would say this is the better code than the, the starter code that I gave you. This will be a lot simpler to reason. There's a reason why they probably let's say just only get the first element and add event to it. All of them are the same. So, so we don't have the problem that Ian had, which is an event run multiple times. In my final code, I use for each and add event, but I know how to jump out of it. I know when to not run it. So, but that's extra logic. So, do this, okay? 
So I will update the starter code, but you can update this yourself. Changes here. Now, do we understand the sorting start parent and end parent? The trick is which form do I submit? All right. I try one more time. Only one list. When I check drag and drop, if I want to save this list right now, I can click save and it's good. All right. If I drag and drop here, I click save and the order will be good. If I drag and drop here without Ajax, I have to click save here. Then I lose information over here. So I have to use Ajax. I click save here. It's safe but does not leave the page. Event.prevent default. And I click save here again. Event.prevent default. And then it saved the form. Okay? That's why instead of clicking the save button myself, after I drag, I will I can tell all the forms to save. How do I do that? When you do this, it's like you're clicking these two buttons, right, at the same time. And they both will get submitted. So I don't even need the, like, start parent and end parent logic. Correct. You don't need it if all you care about is save all forms. So then you say this, if you have 10 lists, if you have 10 lists and you call this, all of them will work, but they, it will save 10 forms. All right? So that will work. And the, the ability to drag will work. However, some of you might say, I have 10 forms, but I only drag from form 1 to form 2. Why do I call save on the other ones? And that's true. Imagine you have a lot of users, the user, you know, have a lot of forms. It's just stupid to save everything. That's why you could use this guy to save. Okay, so this is option one, easy way one, all right? This is the easy way. Here's the smarter way. Here's the smarter way. Save the form that contains start parent. And down here, you wanna save the form that contains end parent. And that's it. And I don't need this save button anymore, by the way. Let's not care about it, okay? In the previous implementation, the list here, you see the save, I add hidden here. It's kind of nice, but you don't need it. Let's say, I just put it out there so we all can see it. All right. All right, the save button always show now for you to test saving by yourself. If it works, right now I save by myself. All right, it's submit. So if you want to be able to call submit, Make sure you call event default, you add an event prevent default. I haven't done that here. How do I submit? How do I run this code? Save the form that contains start parent. Who you wanna guess? In what? I dra drag here. What is my start parent? Here, right? Where is the form? Where is the form? Is it inside this start parent or is it outside? Is it the parent or is it children? Or is it the siblings? So that's the form and this is the list. So it's inside. You can see the form is the parent. So you can say form is e.detail.startParent dot parent anything I need to change oh come on guys it's not jQuery yet don't be too spoiled jQuery first right okay <clears throat> so this get the direct parents you know that this get all the parents I don't need so start parent is not jQuery thing so it's not no yeah, no yeah, because it comes from the other library, and that library doesn't require jQuery. It's just an element. All right. It's a yeah. <clears throat> Do you understand this part? Sometimes, let's say, if the form is not here, but it's here, it's somewhere up there. It's my grandfather, right? 
So it depends, you can call parent or parent, or you can say, hey, if you are my parent, find the guy that is the form. And then that guarantee that for you. So sometimes people write, like to write this, so that even if you move, if you wrap this URL in another container, your code still work. So it's nicer than to say, hey, parent. Parent is the direct parent, right? Parents, then is parents, grandparents, Grand grandparents, right? Great grandparents. Now, if you do parents with something, then it will find the first element that match that selector. This is called a selector, and I want to find form. Yeah. Of course, if you want to be extra extra careful, you give it a class too, but no need, right? That's how I find the form, and this form is a jQuery element. So you can call submit on it. So that's how you submit. And let's check it out. Okay? Let's check it out. Submitting. Uh, so in this case, I say console.log submitting form. Okay? Reload. Now, look. Drag. And then you see something change. And you know, well, I don't see anything there. So you have to click this. And find preserve log. Run it one more time. Drag. Moved. Detail parent. And then submit that form. This is the form that gets submitted. Okay. And you see that it submitted. It moved to a new page. What do I do next? Yes. You can copy this code. You can say, I'm going to get the second form. Here is a, the end form, all right? To be e dot detail dot end parent parent form, and then you can call form dot submit. Now add a console lock here too. So that's pretty cool. Now inside here we can submit two forms. If you do this way, like Oscar Oscar said. When you run this submit, it's running halfway, and then the other guy submit, and then you may not get everything. What happens just now? I show it to you one more time. If I move, it will submit uh, the first list. All right. This is ID zero. So let me go into index, and here's list index zero I'm, I'm, I'm using fake data okay so I'm just trying to say like this is index one and then this is uh, today become like done or something like that doing all right so if you list name here is also doing this is fake data right but it's still going to submit so if I check that that's doing and the, the hidden I ID in here is one, and hit that ID on the left is, is zero. So let's see what happens if my JavaScript is trying to do both. Submit this, and then submit this, okay? Drag here, go down here, submit form, and a submit form, and submit end form, and one of them gets submitted. I don't know which one. Okay, and I check the log. Huh. This one, the first one gets submitted, the second one doesn't. So depending maybe on, this is a huge form. So the, somehow this, the, the first one gets submitted, but the second one did not intercept. Yeah, go ahead. What's that? No, this, in this event, you can use e.detail here. Uh, yes, because this is this event is not by jQuery, it's not a traditional event, so the target may be different. So only in this function, you don't use either target. Now go back to this. Do you guys know how to find the form and how to submit them? We just know only one of them gets submitted. Are we clear on that? So to prevent this, what do you do? It doesn't matter, I move anywhere, it trigger and then it just submit. Ah, you're right. So I move in one, so it submit the same form twice. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. 
whoops, all right, I submit two font, but it still only submit one. So let's say move from here to here, okay? It's, it only submit the second one. Move from the second one to the first one. It only submit the first one because when, so it's similar, same experience we had yesterday. The second submit will take over. Stop whatever the first submit is doing and take over. And the, the server has not received what has been submitted by the first one. Still clear? So this is exciting because I know what I'm, I need to do next is I need to inter intercept all the form that do update list. Are we clear on this one? So I say if any of this guy is submitted, yeah, then I should do something. Here's an event that you can do event dot target. But what you want to do is prevent default. Yeah? And then you say, for example here, prevent it. Right? Event dot target from submitting. I don't do it for all the forms. I only do it for these guys. Okay? Doing this, it affects seven forms. Do this, it affects my three forms. I mean, three over here. But doing this, it affects these two forms. Okay? One more time. Always make sure you get this selection correctly. If you don't, nothing shows up, no error, and then you feel like really lost. Alright? I need to check that the length. Uh oh. So that's not correct. Uh oh. See? That's not the right. That's not good. What is the form name? I did not even have a form name here. Oh, update all. Sorry, my. This code is very, it's a little different from my final code. Update all, right? All items, maybe you should name it to update this, it's better. I, I rename it eventually. Oh, see, so I have update all, two of them. One more time to make sure that you guys can see it. Eh? CSS, border, one pixel, solid red. These two forms I'm going to submit. Now, if I drag now, to, from here to here, you see that, uh oh, it's not preventing because I have not updated this guy. All right, reload. Look at these guys. This is also a nice way to know that it's not submitted because if it's submitted, the red color will disappear. Okay, I drag from here to here, and you see that Okay, detail pattern here, submitting this form, and it get prevented from submitting. So second one, submitting, prevented. Okay? So when you prevent, what do you want to do next? That's it. Right? The page has what you drag to, and then everything's up to date. If you refresh the page, if you save the data properly, you refresh the page, it looks exactly the same. So nothing else but this Ajax call. Okay? So what should I call in this Ajax call? Some of you have used Ajax yesterday. It's exciting. Have you tried it? We have you tried it? Yeah. Well, if you submit, if you use jQuery to visit a website, what do you need first? URL. All right. What is the second one? Method. Method. So in this case, we are submitting data. So it's a post. What's the third one? Data. That's pretty simple. So I tend to create a variable so I can use it. So I can say your know, var data. Initially, I can just say name hello because I don't know what it is yet. The, initially, I can set this to post. I, I am sure I want to post. That's enough. Now, how do I do this? How do I get the URL? If you are really lazy on this one, it's okay. You know exactly where it's submitting. 
it's submitting to this page this update okay if you are lazy you can put it there and it will work okay if some of you feel mm, I think it can be smarter than that it means I am submitting a form so my event target is a form here's a variable but I want to make it a jQuery variable so I add this this is just a variable name I, I add a dollar there so it's easier to see you can call it with or without the dollar it's okay right Ruby allows you know allows question mark at the end JavaScript allow whatever random characters at the beginning so I have this form now it means form I submit to the URL that the form action right of course it's not called form action but you say hey get the attribute action in that form okay sometimes you might have to do console.log to print this out to make sure you get the action right if you don't submit to the right place so same thing here form dot attribute method so do I need to do it am I, do I want to submit them all or do I want to submit f2 ajax data things when you inside you're just submitting one form I'm submitting all of them no here is it's like each this oh, event no. or target, this is only one single form. We're talking about one form right now. Yeah, so my question is, since I'm moving from one form to another. Yeah. Right, so, okay. I'll let's try to submit one form first. Okay. Right, and then, you know, let's revisit that. So don't forget that one. So I get the current form. Sometimes when you read this, you feel like, oh, I don't know what, what it is. Like, so that's why you see that I sometimes I write current form there to to tell the reader that hey don't worry about anything else I'm looking at the current form in this current event right so as you get used to it you can do form I have form and now what is the data who remember what the data is basically yeah so you learn that beautiful jQuery method serialize array and give you an array of objects like you know the curly it's like array of hashes in Ruby. And this array of object is based on your params, right? For example, you get the first form, right? Turn that into jQuery, and then do serialize array. You can always test. And that's like, wow, 18. You know? These are the object, right? ID, name, the first one, the second one. And then this is get passed to your params. It's beautiful, right? So I have that, and I click that. So that this will just submit to the server. Now sometimes it fails, sometimes it doesn't. So there's something else that you might want to use, like success and error. I'm not sure if it's called error, but we'll see. Uh, right? So. And here will be. You can even print out what E has, right? The body of. Uh, it's, all right. So reload. Drag from A to B. You see success in the first, and the success in the second. Okay. So we kind of understand that and you go look at the server this is the second and this is the first okay now any question uh, serialize we did it with adding we had to actually spell out the entire HTML. There. The HTML is like a string. HTML. So when we cast serialize, we're like adding a new item. Uh huh. And you want to append it. Are you talking about updating the, the form? Yeah. That's different. We're not updating anything. Are you, are you talking about updating the HTML? Yeah. That's a different task, right? Yeah. 
if you make if you use Ajax, what we just use. Oh, sorry. The reason is because yeah. what Lloyd said earlier, what we're doing with sortable is basically just moving the HTML, so it's already there. It's already there. Okay. Yeah. Correct. I don't need to use Ajax to update it. Right. So you see what happened. Normally you may have three steps. In this case, two steps. What happened is you trigger something. So if you get default, that's step one. Step two, here we just tell the server to update. Sometimes you might want to do three steps. Step one is prevent default. Step two is to update your page using the append. If you make this a, if you press enter and submit, you might want to say these items append this new item. So you update the page yourself and then update the server. So that's three steps. But I don't even know, I, I don't even need people to do that for their homework. So that's the extra, right? You know, on any page like, you know, Facebook or other site, when you press enter there, it updates the page right away and then it sends information to the server. This is the opposite. Look, update, and I type, hey, I press enter, it goes to the server first, and then it updates the page. This is the old school way. Right? But the Ajax way is you update the page and then go to the server. They didn't just add the A to both lists. Yeah, because I have not supported the multi list feature. Okay. I just have a fake list. This is the starter code. Um, I use the starter code to yeah. explain uh, Ajax. Do we have a better idea of this flow? Obviously, I hope the, you know, the video can walk you through back. With this, it should allow you to finish your assignment. <laughs> and if, like, I am super serious that it has to be submitted. So there's no more, uh, there's no more you know, lateness to you know, coming to class. All, all of us are here, we're working on it together, and we can help one another. So what we learned just now in the past half an hour is that there's a school sort of update event in the library. Okay? And how can we add drag and which everyone has done, sortable, to more than one list using connected. No, connect with. Connect with. Thank you again for seeing that. And then how can we run some JavaScript after we finish sorting? You can sort in one list, you sort from one list to another. This is what you do when you finish sorting. And when you are sorting, finish sorting, there are two, only two things you need to worry about. The start parent and the end parent. Yeah? And the start parent and the end parent are only the sortable container. Right? You need to find the form. And where's the form? Where's the form? It's a parent. So you get that form and you submit it. So here's the hard way. And now here's the easy way. You can go the one liner way or you can go the long way. This is the easy way, one line. Right? Easy way. This is the easy way there. If you really don't want to figure out all of this, this is the hard way. Uh, up here, and it's not that hard, right? I'm just calling that again. Okay, so you remove after this, you can remove a few console.log because that's just like too, you know, too much. Now this is important though. This one, you have to know how to use it. Prevent default, so the this submit will not be affected. How to get the data by using serialized array. Okay? Now, sometimes I don't like doing JavaScript on a random class name like this. You see update all? So sometimes I say JS remote. I say I want this form to be a form that it's like an Ajax form. 
you can name it JS, you know, Ajax. Remote here just means that it's updating. This is the name that, that Rails uses, uh, like remote, but it may not make sense to you. So let's say if I name this JS Ajax, how can I make this work? I have to go and update that. All right, JS Ajax. Okay, make sure you add to them. What's the benefit? I use update all or update list this class. I use it in CSS. Okay, all right. I style it, or I use it when it's clear for the purpose of it's a list form. I use JS Ajax class when I just want to do some JS behavior to it. So this is an idea for you to make your code a little bit more clear and it's a different responsibility. But you don't have to. If you have one class, at this stage you use one class and you do this, I'm happy with. Yeah? But in a, you know, as a code when you work with multiple people, uh, it's very nice to add a clear class for that behavior. Any, CS, uh, any HTML class that you use for JavaScript, try to use the JS class name, something like that. Some people like to use the word IS, like ease, like you know, it's a behavior. Uh, or over here you see that I think it's, they call it O. I don't know why, but he like, the, 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 this version he doesn't, in some other, in the, his example, he used O. So, it's just a convention that we we choose, right? Is this not a normal CSS add HTML class for you to use CSS to update? It's just naming, nothing else. I have an English name when I talk to you in English. I use my Vietnamese name when I talk to people in Vietnamese. Exactly like this. I use my JavaScript name, uh, class name when I want. Okay? So by being able to draw out the class here, I think it's really powerful to tell you guys that you can work on one form at a time. And the most difficult of all is that drag and drop here that we just covered, okay? The advanced feature is when you drag here and here, it's slightly different. You have to update the ID in them and you have to s submit all of the forms. But I leave it to the advanced case and you have questions on that, I can explain. Okay, let's take a break and then start working on the homework. Uh, assignment.